Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down this amazing new feature N8N just released, showcasing how you can use human in the loop for approval for any of your processes. So every single day, our agent is going to look at our CRM. It's going to then analyze if any leads have hit the not contacted in 60 day status. And if they have, the agent's going to extract their information from the CRM, write a personalized email to them, send a draft of this email for approval to our sales team where they can, you know, essentially just approve decline and even provide edits and suggestions to then send an email that's going to be up to our company's standard. So there's so many different ways that you can use human in the loop to help your company. But overall, it's just a surefire way to ensure that if you are sending out any high priority emails or anything that may need a second look to easily just get in front of the relevant team member to ensure that you have the right checks and balances necessary, then this is going to be for you. So as always, I just wanted to get into a quick demo so we can see the entire workflow right here. Don't get too stressed out. It's really not that comprehensive or complex. Now I'll pull over into our CRM. So I have a few different hypotheticals. So we just have some, a few different leads in here. So we have Nick, Tom, and Jerry. Now we can see here that the last contacted date, you know, the last time they were reached out to, uh, we have them listed right here. So Nick, he was last contacted today. So we don't have to worry about him. We're not going to be focused on him. Our team needs to reach out to people who were who haven't been contacted in the last 60 days. So Tom and Jerry right here, they were both contacted last in November in the 10th. So that's more than 60 days ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over into our workflow and we're just going to test this manually because normally this would run on a trigger. So every single day it's going to check and see if anyone's hitting that you know, 60 day mark. But what we're going to do is we're going to run this manually because we don't want to have to wait for a day. So I'm going to go ahead and click on test workflow. And now we'll see the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to run into this agent right here, this tools agent. So this one's really just going to check if any of these leads are past the 60 days. If they are, then it's going to pass into the next stage. It's going to give this to an LLM where it's just going to clean up all the data. Then later on, it's going to be sending us a Slack message. Now you can use any internal communication platform like Telegram or email, whatever that may be, Outlook. So we can see right here, it says, do you approve this message to Tom? So this is what the agent wrote right here, this email. So it says, hi, Tom, I've, I've noticed you haven't booked a call with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to respond. We're going to say this first one, yes, this looks fine. I'll submit that. I'm going to close this out now. And we should be getting another message because we had two leads that weren't contacted in the last 60 days. So this is pretty much the same one. So we will say, no, this needs to be more formal. It should mostly be the same though. So I'm going to submit this. Now what's going to happen is it is going to go up to the top. It's going to determine the sentiment, whether we should approve. So one of those emails, it was sent out another one. It's going to be having to go through this different workflow where it's going to make revisions. So we should have another Slack message. So it already made those revisions for us. It said, here's the revisions to prove this message to Jerry. So now it just made some tweaks based off of these suggestions that we previously had mentioned. So we're going to respond again. Now we're going to write a response. We say, yes, this is fine. I'll submit. And it could just be as simple as replying yes. And you could also, instead of just having respond here, it could be approve, decline. And you know, all you have to do is just press one button and you won't have to do anything else. But you know, again, it's going to be so dependent on your use case and what's going to be helpful for you. But anyways, if we come into the workflow, once this is finally finished, we'll see that it is now sending off a uh, Gmail. So if I open this up, we will see that it is sending off these emails. We're sending off to this email address, cherry at gmail.com. Here's the subject line and here's the message. Really quick, I wanted to mention that if you're a business owner looking to implement AI agents and other custom AI solutions into your company to drive revenue and create operational leverage, then check out the link below to work with us. And if you're looking to grow and scale your own AI agency, my partner and I are opening up three more spots to work directly one-on-one -on -one with us, where we guarantee to start landing you clients and get you on the right track to becoming a successful AI consultant. Lastly, before I forget, you can get this template for completely free in my school community as well. Now, that's everything that this specific use case is going over. So let's get into how we can actually start building this out step by step. As I mentioned, it's relatively straightforward. It's pretty simple and not as complex as it may seem from the service level. But anyways, the first thing that we're going to be doing is defining our trigger. So for us, we want this automation to start running every single day. So really for you, define what's going to be helpful for you. Is it, you know, anytime a Google Sheets row status has changed? So let's say in this example, is it maybe when a client changes to prospect or 
if a new lead is added, then that's when you want to automatically send these messages, whatever it may be. But we're going to keep this very particular to our specific hypothetical. So the next thing we're going to be doing is passing this into a tools agent. And this agent is going to be connected to Google Sheets right here. Now what we're saying in here, well, first we're providing it with a date. So this is important for determining if something's going to be passed 60 days. So today is February 10th. So essentially we just want to see if anything's passed the 60 days based off of, you know, current date and time. So we said your job is to analyze if any of the leads have been contacted in the last 60 days or not. If they haven't, then you are to create an email. To determine this, you must call this Google Sheets tool and check the last contacted column. And if it is past the current date by 60 days, then your output should always continue to the next stage and also include the email output you created with the subject line and their email. If any are not past the 60 days, then you do not continue for that record. Here's the email structure you to follow. So I'll just give it the subject line and some format that I wanted to follow. Again, this is pretty foundational and it's not really meant to be used in production, you know, for your company, these emails and everything. So I'm just saying like, I know that you haven't booked a call with us, but in any case, we're just returning intermediate steps. So providing us the logs of what's happening. So that's more or less not completely relevant, but one of the more relevant things is to connect it to a Google Sheets tool. So if we go down to these tools right here, if we just find Google Sheets, you'll find that first and you'll just hook it up. So we're just connecting it to our document, of course, finding the right sheet. We're not putting any sort of filters on here. And then we're also just connecting a LLM. So we're using OpenAI 4.0 Mini, I believe. So we're using 4.0 Mini. Now what we're doing next is once we actually run this, we're going to get an output that looks something like this. So it says, let me move this over. So here are the leads and their last contacted dates. So here's Nick. He was last contacted on uh, February 10th. So this does say that I was contacted within the last 60 days. So it's the agent is recognizing and actually doing that calculation for me. You know, you might want to use something a little bit more advanced than just GPT-4 or Mini. I haven't ran into any issues using Mini, but you know, perhaps you want to use some later models like DeepSeq R1, R3 would probably be great as well. Yeah, 4.0 Mini might not be the best for the specific use case and you could run into issues where it's not determining the 60 days properly, but I'll just preface that. So we can see right here, we just have a whole mesh of different things. So we have the email to uh, Tom, we have the email to Jerry. So what we want to do is we're going to pass this into an LLM. You can also use a code node if you would like to kind of clean everything up. But what we're doing for our case, we're saying you are to analyze the text and only provide me with emails written. So I need the body, I need the subject line, the recipient and their email. So I then say the output should always be structured and labeled like so. Here's the recipient, here's the email, subject and body line. One of the most important things about this, well, first you want to provide the output. So what I do right here is I'm just dragging this in here and this is just giving this new LLM actual context. Next up, the more important thing is outputting the content is JSON, and that's what's going to allow you to have these separate schemas right here. So we have the recipient, we have the email, subject, body, and we have it all split up. So we have two different, entirely different emails. So one's going to be to Tom, one's going to be to Jerry, okay? That's exactly what we're looking for right here, and it's super important that it's going to be split up into separate schemas for us, and I'll show you why. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to split this out because we want to have this iterate once at a time. So we don't want a Slack message providing us with two emails at once. We want it to be just one at a time. So what we do is we split out and then this allows us to put our items as two different items instead of just one. And that might sound confusing, but I'll try my best to explain. So right here, we have two items if I come into the table. So item one is this column right here. Item two is the second row right here. Normally, this would all just be one item. So if we come into OpenAI, we'll see right here, it's just one item. Everything is together as so. Now, what we want to do is we want to pass this into a loop. And a loop is just going to allow us to do one item at a time. So you see right here, we have two items. So first, it's going to iterate through Tom. Then once Tom is finished and it's received a message and you know to find the loop, also same with the split out, all you have to do is just search up split out. You'll have that right there in the loop. So let me actually back up and show you how you can use the split out. So you'll find the message content emails. So what I do is I literally just drag over this object right here, or actually I drag over, yeah, I believe it was the object that I dragged over. If not, then it was the array. But in any case, you're just dragging and dropping the previous JSON output. Next up, we'll be using the loop over item. Don't change anything in here. Keep the batch size as one. 
So I'll even show you really quick. So we have output one, outputs two, for some reason it's not showing all of them on the output. But anyways, we're then connecting this to a Slack node. And the Slack node, if you search up add node, you should see human in the loop and this as it shows wait for approval or human input before continuing so we have discord we have gmail google chat outlook send email slack and trigger or telegram sorry i can't speak today now you may not have this little section right here if that's the case all you have to do is if you go into the admin panel i want to make sure that this doesn't leave my workflow let me save that so i'm going to go into the admin panel i'm going to go to manage and you'll want to make sure that you are on this latest version. So 1.78 as opposed to 1.77.3. So once you update that, it will take about a minute for your workflow to update. But let me go back to my previous execution and copy this to the editor. But anyways, once you actually pull up the Slack node, what we're doing is we're just connecting it to our channel. So in this message, we're just saying, do you approve this message? I provide it with the recipient. I provide it with the items body, so the email content. Now, what you can also do is you can include a limit of a wait time. So with this wait time, I'm providing it about 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, I actually didn't input anything in particular for it to happen. So I'm not too sure what's going to happen if I don't include any logic for that. Well, normally what you can do is after 45 Five minutes if you want it to automatically get approved then you could do so or if you want it to not send anything out and send you another message then so be it but anyways we're then connecting it to a sentiment analysis so what this is going to do is it's going to determine if something should be approved or disapproved and we're just providing it with the context so we provide it with the previous outputs json so we provide it with the data text and this is going to say, you know, this is where I'm going to provide my response. So if I'm saying something like, I don't know if this is going to open. Yeah, because I already answered something. But, you know, hypothetically, if I open this up and I say, no, this needs to be fixed, then this is going to recognize that. So that's where that text is going to be entered into the sentiment analysis node. So what we're doing next is we are then going through an approve or disapproved. Obviously, if it's approved, you know, that's the ideal route. Who we're sending it to, the subject, the email type. So that's just going to be text or you could do HTML, whichever you choose. And then the message. So we're, all we're just doing is we're just dragging this over from the split out or you could just type into the expression. So we'll do money parentheses split out item that JSON that subject or this would be body. I believe so i have a typo there so for some reason it's still not working properly okay there we go there's a lot of bugs when it comes to dragging and dropping so i would recommend learning how to type out your expressions in json it's super useful and it's you know saved my butt time and time and again but anyways we're just dragging over or typing out the expressions of who we want to send this message to now if it's not approved, if we are providing any sort of revisions or anything of the sort, then we're going to go down the separate route. And also if you want to change up the tags, so this is where you do it. So approve or disapproved, you could just type out, if you want one that says neutral, then you'll just have a, another one right here that says neutral. So I'm going to back out. All right, now we have our revision agent here and this is an LLM agent. LLM agents are, as you would expect, just talking to a LLM of your choosing. So I am using once again, GPT-4 Mini, use whichever you like, which one fits you. So what I say is here's the suggested edits, here's the feedback, you know, same thing. And then I provide it with the text. So that text is what I'm saying in the response. So in that button that comes up on Slack. So I'm saying, I need you to make this more formal. That information is going to be passed into this LLM model right here. And then I provide it with also the original email. So just giving a context of what an email should more or less be structured like. And then this comes out with the suggested or the revisions, I should say. So in here, I'm saying you're to analyze the feedback provided regarding the original email and then make a new email based on the suggestions slash feedback. And then this next up, we're just connecting to another LLM. So we're doing the same thing that we were doing in this node right here. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. So next up, what we're doing is we're using another Slack node to wait for human in the loop approval. So what we say here is here's the revisions. Do you approve this message to, you know, it's the same exact thing as this node with, you know, just a small tweak to the text. And once again, this is what it looks like up here. So it says, here's the revisions. Do you approve this message to Jerry? And then it'll just show it right here. Okay. Now, if I back up and I open up this node, we could also change up the response type. So if you want this to just be some sort of approval where it's just, you know, 
approve and decline. So let me show you right here. We could do an approve only, or we could do approve and disapprove. And you could change however you want these buttons to say. So you can have it say, yes, looks good. And you can have the decline say, no, this is sucky. Okay. And then you can change up the button style. So if you want it to look like a primary or a secondary button, then so be it. But you know, these are just minor tweaks to customization that aren't too important. And then again, you have the limit of the wait time. So always to get that, you'll just go to the options, add option, and it's the only one. And you could put that into minutes, hours, and days. So you can get very specific with how these work, which is um, pretty cool. It's a nice, uh, nice little feature to have. But anyways, we're just dragging this back over to the sentiment analysis. So how I did that is all I did is just connect this back to here. And in the sentiment analysis, we're just providing it with the, actually we'll have to change this up. It should say json.output. So let me fix that. Actually, I believe it would be json output text. Maybe one more fix, but anyways, that is more or less what this agent really looks like. And you can get this template from my school community if you want to download it, use it for yourself, use it for your company, whatever the reason is going to be. But yeah, I um, really just wanted to get this video out there to show you guys how you can use human in the loop. I think it's a very functional and useful tool when it comes to waiting for approval, revision, suggestions, whatever it may be, where you just need somebody to kind of oversee something in that process, you know, whether that's sending out a very high priority email, whatever it may look like. But yeah, in any case, Thank you guys for watching. And again, if you are a company looking to drive revenue and ultimately increase your bottom line, then you can apply to work with us where we will implement custom AI solutions. And if you're looking to grow and scale your own AI agency, my partner and I are opening up just three more spots to work one-on-one -on -one directly with us where we will guarantee to start landing you clients and get you on the right track to become a successful AI consultant. But once again, thanks guys for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.